So the League of Nations was set up in 1919. And the reason for the League of Nations being put in place was to prevent another world war from happening. And it failed because World War II happened. So in 1946, the League of Nations was disbanded. 1945, the year previous, the United Nations kickoff. So the same people noticed that this thing didn't work out and want to save face. They end up rebranding themselves and become the United Nations and other nations jump on board as well. And now they continue to do what they want and get what they want. So the United Nations have big plans in the Caribbean. And this is not an attack on the United Nations. This is a notification for the people of the Caribbean so that we can prepare ourselves for what is happening. Because I can assure you that other people are prepared. The United Nations have administrative departments in the Caribbean. They have specialized agencies. I wonder if the common people know about these agencies, where they are. And who are these people working for them? They have programs and a lot of these programs is directed to your children, shaping the mind of your children. We are teaching them to go and serve someone else. So when I hear people say that Africans sold Africans or Africans sold us and we should be mad, what I see is a hypocrite. There's a big H on their forehead because many of us are doing the same today, but in a different way. We are selling our children. We are selling the land that our ancestors fought for. We are selling everything. We should not be relying on the United Nations and other people, especially those who colonized you. Because we're going to assume that they're always up to something. Because many of them are. The UN have independent entities in the Caribbean. They also have hubs throughout the Caribbean. So think of that. You have Caribbean governors and government who's focused on their nation mostly. But then you have the UN having hubs throughout the Caribbean. So they are like the overarching government over the caribbean remember the same people who started the league of nations the same people who initiate most of these wars are the ones who want to be the leaders of pushing peace so their work in the caribbean is coordinated through networks of six hubs based in belize barbados guyana jamaica suriname and trinidad and tobago they provide funding for English and Dutch speaking countries and I've spoke about this before they always talk about what they do for the Caribbean but they never talk about what they get from it really at least the common people is not hearing about it they are not putting it out there they are not articulating it to the masses but they always want to tell you what they're doing for you we are sending agencies programs money and all this stuff we are doing for you they have milestones in place they have 17 goals as well First one, no poverty. And this touches me a certain way because it sounds good and it draws you in. When people hear folks with money say, we want to end poverty. When they have families, not these nations, they have families in this world, in those countries, or of those countries who can purchase the entire Caribbean. They have so much money that they can purchase the entire Caribbean, yet they're talking about no poverty they want to end poverty but do they really want to end poverty because once you end poverty in the caribbean then the people can now focus on higher things but when you're in poverty and constantly fighting for your life you're not so much worried about what these new people coming into your country are doing or what they are buying up you see a new road being built and you're so happy about that the simplest things make you happy these folks study and understand what a society needs they've been doing this for generations some people can have dolphins jumping through fire and lions doing backflip all type of fancy stuff you best believe they have you down to a t as well number two on their goal for the caribbean is zero hunger number three good health and well-being these things sound good why would people in poverty not want to cling on to this and that is why I say unification is strength. Because if the people in the country don't have any connections with their neighbors and all they have to rely on is their government and these people coming in with money, then they are going to be hooked very easily and be rammed through the ringers. Number four, quality education. Everyone wants this for their children. But Caribbean people, Caribbean men, Caribbean women, we have to work together to provide this because your enemy will never teach you the things that you need to learn so that you can get on your own feet and not need them anymore. They want to ensure that you need them forever. History has proven that. Number five, gender equality. The black man and the black woman 
was in slavery at the same time. So we should not allow people to come in and push their feminism stuff, talking about women this and women that, because men oppressed them. The reason why certain men was able to be so powerful is because their woman was holding them down, was supporting their children and household and all type of stuff. So how is it now? We have the black woman and people of other minority communities talking about they are equal with the Caucasian woman. She was protected. The Caucasian woman was protected the entire time. And this is not a hate towards anyone. This is simply the reality that no one likes to hear. Number six, clean water and sanitation. Who does not want that? We want it, but we want to learn how to do it for ourselves so we don't have to rely on you. Number seven, affordable and clean energy. Number eight, decent work and economic growth. Imagine that, someone coming to your house and trying to tell you how to live your life. We should take that, sure, we will take the advice, but I don't want you to keep doing that. I want to learn this stuff so that you don't have to be here to do that for us. Number nine, industry, innovation, and infrastructure. Number 10, reduce inequalities. Number 11, sustainable cities and communities. Number 12, responsible consumption and production. They're going to teach you how to be responsible because you are not civilized. Basically, they're letting you know that. You Caribbean people, you people of African descent, you are not civilized. So we're going to come and teach you these things. And then you have your leaders and they realize that or think to themselves that this person is one of the most intelligent person in your country. That is why you chose them to be your leader. But when I look at your leader, I see that your leader is really not that smart. So if your leader is not that smart because they are falling for my tactics so easily, then there's no way the population could be that smart. So when they see you, they see opportunity. They see a chance to take more land, take more children, take more power. Number 13, climate action. This is one that I hear a lot of politicians echo in the Caribbean. Not poverty, not zero hunger. They talk about climate actions. You think people who are poor and living in poverty has climate action as their number one priority? So our politicians are simply echoing what these masters are saying to them because they want to be on their good side. So that is why the common people should help to provide some balance. That's where we come in. But we cannot do it alone. The Caribbean, the islands are too small. Our numbers are too small if we allow them to divide us. However, if we unify, we can make a difference. Number 14, life below the water. Again, poor people don't have the energy and the time to really focus on that as much. But we have enough people who can balance it out. Because no one care about our oceans, the climate, hunger, quality education for our youths more than us. If you look at the Japanese, you look at the Chinese, and you see how much they invest into their youths, their teachers, see their children as them. They see each other as family. Their identity was never destroyed. So we have a unique situation in the Caribbean on the West. African people are people of African descent. We have a unique situation in the West and we need to deal with it. Even our brothers and sisters in Africa won't fully understand something happened to us and we need to ensure that it never happened again. And we need to ensure that we have a place, we have our place, our nations, and that we continue to be a family. And by doing so, people will think twice about messing with the brothers in Grenada because they know that these people are united and their business in St. Vincent will feel the effect if they do something to the people in Grenada. If they do something to the people in Trinidad, their business in Tobago or in the Virgin Islands is going to feel the effect because the common people know what's going on. We've been talking to each other. Number 15, life and land. Number 16, peace, justice, and strong institutions. And number 17, partnership for the goals. And this is key right here because they're telling you, we want to hold hands with you. We want to be with you and a part of every decision you have to make. We need to have eyes on you. We are not sitting at all their meetings they have. I guarantee you our government don't know all the plans that they have. And that is why I have an issue or I take issue with leaders who are too religious because leaders who are too religious, they make decisions and then they count on God our supreme being to make it right. But the people you're doing business with, even though they believe in God, they know that they need to check everything. They need to touch, feel, see everything. They don't take chances. 
They don't look at faith the way you look at faith. If they believe in God and they really want to do these things they're talking about, where they talk about equality, then they would have a plan to give up all the colonized land. If that is the case and you really care about equality, then the amount of money you made during the transatlantic slave trade, you need to take all the money and divvy it up. So these folks do not really believe in equality. And knowing that people of the Caribbean, people of the West, particularly people of African descent, we need to do whatever we can to off balance this. We need to unify now. The vision of our ancestors was not fulfilled. We don't even really hear anyone talking about it no more. These movements have broken down into bubbles and most people are walking like zombies following after the oppressors. It cannot be both. It's either the warriors that once lived have been rocked to sleep and are now taking their children and entire community into the mouth of the beast or these warriors still exist and they are working their communities, they are making things happen. But that can't be the case when you have so-called UN, United Nations, spread out throughout the Caribbean, having plans for the people of the Caribbean. How can they respect us when they see we don't have any plans, when they see we can't get along with each other? When they realize that they have to come and create all these ideas for us, and our leaders, the leaders that you put in place, run behind them at every beck and call. They can easily pull all the leaders just about in a room just like that. But regardless of that, we need to do more in the Caribbean. We need to come together and make sure that we are able to take advantage of these opportunities because the infrastructure, the hotel, the roads, that tourism industry is not for you. You just so happen to be there and can use it. It is really for the tourists. It is really for their people. The Caribbean to them is like a mall. Not all. The Caribbean is like a shopping mall. They get on their fancy jets and planes and everything, uh, uh, cruise and cruise through the Caribbean, and they're able to see with their own eyes what they want to purchase, what community they want to get into, just as it was in the past, when the ships with the huge white sail and a cross on top of them would sail the islands, just sail past the islands and identify this island, take notes, then take it back to the crown and say, hey, we, we found another island, and they will name it, and then they will revisit the island, march on shore, and take over. What has changed? Nothing has changed because we have not put anything in place to prevent it from repeating itself. So they get to try new strategies over and over and over again. I am pretty sure they are shocked at how easy it is to fail, rebrand, and come back. 